After the video on double entry bookkeeping, a few of you asked, how do I account for stock transactions on my books? Today we'll work a simple example to show you how it's done. For our example, let's return to Alice. Let's say that in January of 2019, she bought 100 shares of Big Co at $10 a share, costing her a total of $1,000. Then, a year later, she sells those 1,000 shares for $15 a share, netting $1,500. How should Alice journal this? If you trade stock shares, you're probably used to thinking of your stock as being worth the number of shares you have times the price. That makes intuitive sense. But in our accounts, money is neither created nor destroyed, and it always has to come from somewhere. So, even if Alice's stock is worth $1,500 on the market, until she sells it, her shares are only worth $1,000, as far as her books are concerned. If Alice does the naive things with these two buy and sell entries, her books will be wrong. If she does a trial balance, you can see that there is a $500 discrepancy. This is because $1,000 went into her share account and $1,500 came out. $500 has been magicked into existence, and that's not allowed. In order to properly account for that $500, Alice has to journal that money as coming from some income account, a capital gain, or if the stock went down, a loss. Most good software packages will provide mechanisms to calculate this for you, but let's do it by hand here, two different ways, just to show you the concept. One way to do this is to use the purchase price of the stock when selling as the basis. Then the difference between the amount of money you netted and your basis is the gain. Again, you wouldn't normally do this by hand, especially if your shares were bought in multiple lots or involved fractional amounts. Calculating this can get complicated fast. But the basic idea stands. The only real thing that comes out of your stock account is a return of capital. Everything else, all the other money, has to come from your capital gain income account or a capital loss expense account. The other way to do this is to add an adjustment entry, correcting the amounts after the fact. If you're using GNU Cash, you can use the View Lots feature to automatically create these entries for you. Whatever technique Alice decides to use to account for her stock transaction, when she's done, she has $1,500 coming back into her checking account, $1,000 of which is a return of capital from her stock account, and $500 of which is a capital gain coming from her capital gain income account. It really is that simple. Hope this helped, and thanks for watching.